It's a huge stride just to have the arts mentioned in a national campaign, as Senator Barack Obama did recently, speaking in Wallingford, Delaware County. We have to just improve arts and music funding generally in schools, but also outside of schools. Our support of the public arts, our support for arts institutions. Obama's not the only one talking about the arts. Now, uh, when Senator Clinton and Senator Obama have written statements about what they would do if elected president for the arts and arts education. And that is different. It's never happened in a primary season before. Narek Rome is a director at Americans for the Arts Action Fund, the top arts advocacy group in the country. The organization has led the coordinated effort to raise the specter of the arts in the presidential candidates' platforms. The Americans for the Arts Action Fund kicked off the Arts Vote Initiative in New Hampshire in May 2007. With the help of New Hampshire Citizens for the Arts, Arts Vote New Hampshire hired a campaign coordinator on the ground to attend presidential campaign events, meet directly with the candidates, and visit with campaign policy staff. The Arts Vote New Hampshire effort was reported on local television, New Hampshire Public Radio, and every one of New Hampshire's daily newspapers. As the presidential primaries are now at our doorstep, we intend to keep the arts in the forefront and keep the pressure on the candidates. One of the objectives of our work in the next year is to secure bold new policy proposals in support of the arts and arts education in America from candidates in the 2008 presidential primary. And we have formally asked each of the candidates to adopt or expand um, points from, from the uh, list that I just gave you or to come up with creative similar proposals of their own. Now one of the points of the 10 points that has been our strongest uh, advocacy weapon is economic impact, the economic impact of the arts in America. We discovered in a national study that we did last year that the nonprofit arts in America are a $166 billion um, economic impact in America, bigger than anybody thought, with 5.7 million jobs and generating almost $30 billion back in government revenue. That's huge. So there's something wrong in Washington when we do not have our federal government, you know, understanding the economic impact that Bob has been talking about and promoting our own cities. Now the mayors have taken a major position, as Tom Cochran has pointed out, to say that we want this to be part of our 10-point plan. And this is significant. This is significant because we're not saying this just as the mayor of Honolulu or the mayor of Stamford, Connecticut. We're saying that all 1,100 mayors that belong to this wonderful organization are saying, in effect, we want to implore the federal government to do more for the arts. As arts advocates in New Hampshire were taking action on the campaign trail, the Arts Action Fund published a pro-arts issue brief to provide a vision for how the arts and arts education could be strengthened nationally. The statement provides ideas and proposals on how a new president can strengthen cultural policies across the federal government. The issue brief was distributed to the candidates and their staff, and since then, many of the candidates have spoken out on their vision for arts and arts education. I can tell you, and I've been, this is not new to me, I've been saying this for many years, because I believe so strongly in the importance of the arts, I will ensure that we, as a, at a national level, are providing incentives and funding to help promote the arts, both in public school and at colleges and universities. Here's something else. You know, we worry about science and math scores. I'm a big believer in art in the schools. If you give kids a chance to expand their mind through art, drama, music, uh, sculpture, that will expand their minds for science and math. This is from uh, Memphis, I believe, yeah. Now, I believe that song is Born to be Wild. Is that your inner self? It probably would be Born to be Mild, would be a better one for me. I love uh, music. One of the things that I'm very passionate about is music and art and education because it was life-changing for me. I think in a creative economy, we've got to have a, a whole group of uh, kids coming up and a generation whose left and right brains are stimulated. It's something I push for as a governor in Arkansas where we are one of the few states that require both music and art education. I'm a musician. I'm passionate about it. But I think this, this country has made a huge mistake in cutting music and art out of school budgets and it's something we've got to address because the future economy is dependent upon a creative generation. Governor Mike Huckabee, he's announced for president. Thank you for sharing your views and we'll be following your campaign. Thank you, Tim. I hear story after story about music and art or 
physical education or field trips being cut out of the school day to make more time for drilling and routine work to prepare for the test. How much learning is exactly going on? When I was a kid, and I think most people who are old like me, you know, some of you kids won't remember this, but um, I mean, you always had an art teacher and a music teacher. It, you could be in the poorest school district in the world. Now, I'm not saying music was always exciting, <laughs> right? I mean, sometimes, you know, the, the, the teacher would be making you sing songs that, you know, from like the old show tunes, you know? I had one music teacher maybe Oklahoma, where the... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I was more into Stevie Wonder, so there was a... But, but the point is that everybody had access to music, everybody had access to art. And the reason is, is because people understood, even though they hadn't done the scientific research back then, we have done now, that children who learn music actually do better in math. Kids whose imaginations are sparked by the arts are more engaged in school. Kids who have physical education are more able to pay attention in the classroom. So these things aren't just extras, they are part of a well-rounded education. And that's something that I strongly believe in. That's one of the main reasons we need to promote the arts. Uh, and the other thing is, is that we have to just improve arts and music funding generally in, uh, in schools but also outside of schools. Uh, and the endowment for the arts, our support of the public arts, our support for arts institutions, all those things uh, should be a priority, and they don't cost that much money. They really don't. Uh, I mean, and, but you get such a big payoff. Most recently, the Americans for the Arts Action Fund, in partnership with NAM, co-hosted policy discussions at both the Democratic and Republican National Conventions. The event during the Democratic Convention took place at the Museo de las Americas in Denver. The event in St. Paul, during the Republican Convention, took place at the Minnesota Children's Museum. Here are some of the highlights from those events. I think the main bridge for me to developing confidence, to developing my social skills, was me becoming uh, active in the performing community at school. And I know that if there wasn't the show choir or the theater and the other musical outlets for me, I wouldn't have been involved in school and involved with other students at school in the way that I was. We get back is so enormous. And it is a sin to me that we don't do everything we can to expose every child from birth on, you know, we've heard two birth stories here, to music and to art because we are losing a lot of that great capital of imagination and growth and opening both sides of the brain and learning things. To me, the great thing about music and when music is available to you at school, it breaks down barriers of race. It breaks down barriers of, of, of financial status. It breaks down um, the cool kids and the, and the not so cool kids, doesn't matter. Because if every kid's got a trumpet or every kid's got a whatever they're playing and you got first chair, second chair, third chair, fourth chair, sometimes the cool kids fourth chair and the poor kids first chair. Yeah. And it completely shifts the balance of how, of how you think about yourself. Surveys have shown that 90% of American parents want their children to be in music and arts classes. Now look, you don't have to be the biggest, best, or smartest politician to be able to read and understand a 90% poll of anything. <laughs> so if nothing else, help them to understand that this is an issue that has no political downside. It really doesn't. But more importantly, it has a great American upside. And that's why we ought to push it, because it's the right thing to do for our kids.